Okay, I'm just going to give a brief explanation here just to grab your attention. I told you that the Bible was written in a four-dimensional code. We're going to look at the very first foundation, the deepest part of the deception, and it has everything to do with gematria. And what this is, is a Hebrew letter number code. So if the Bible is being translated from English to Greek to Hebrew, but what you don't understand is that before the Hebrew, we go back to the Sumerian translation. So many works from the Bible are of an older, earlier time of the Sumerians. And I'm going to be able to prove that the Hebrew language stems directly from the Sumerian language itself. One of the ways of doing it is connecting this gematra or the gematria to the Anunnaki and then connecting that to the Hebrew letter number code of which the Hebrew alphabet in the Bible is inscribed from. So the Bible is inscribed from the Hebrew letter. The Hebrew letter is encoded with a number value. That number value ends up quantifying into another word value, another word meaning. So Quite simply, I could say that each letter of the Hebrew alphabet, all 22, create multiple, multiple words depending on the number arrangement or the number value that's given. Now, I don't expect you to understand that because it's very, very complicated. What you need to understand is this, is that the Hebrew alphabet is a code. It's a letter number code that spells out more words and phrases, and in some cases, full sentences from just one letter phrase of the Hebrew alphabet. So let's take, for example, this. If this is what you need to see, man, this is going to be the shocker, okay? This is one word that is taken out of the Hebrew alphabet. I mean, out of the Hebrew Bible. Just one word, okay? One Hebrew word for empty. The Hebrew word for empty. Now remember, the Hebrews or the Jews were the ones, now not the spiritual ones, but the material-minded, those that had, had adhered to the law, ones that had to have prophecy fulfilled in such a way that when Christ returned, he was going to take back the throne of David militantly. And when he didn't fulfill that prophecy and exalt the Jews above all nations and sit on the throne of David in a militant way and put asunder all of the nations like in their prophecies they contorted it to seem they rejected him he came meek and they were expecting this ravenous lion okay so this is how he's deemed now you know that they said that when he said he was the son of god they said that he blasphemed god Listen to what the word empty is going to translate to from the Hebrew original letter number code. The first word selected was one meaning empty. In Hebrew, it is spelled nun, ayin, vav, resh. Thus, its gematria, its number value is 50, 70, 6, 200. When you add those numbers up, you get 326. You're going to begin to understand what all of these number that they are saying to you and all of this occult symbolism. Everybody's looking at numbers. There's numbers. They're saying these numbers. You can break down the numbers using the gematria, and you're going to figure out exactly what they're telling each other. Now, listen what empty translates to in Hebrew. This is a number that is listed in Sefer Sephiroth. And surprisingly, is that of Yeshua. Do you hear that? Yeshua, the Redeemer. Can you believe that? And then the word for vision comes up, which is saying that Yeshua is empty. Empty. They're telling you that God does not dwell in Yeshua, that he is empty, that his vision is empty, that his truth is empty that he is empty. That's what Yeshua translates back to in the Hebrew letter number.